Hello everyone. Welcome to MS Subti webcast. In this video guide, we are going to install and configure IP address management feature on Windows Server 2019. IPAM is an integrated suite of tools in Windows Server 2019 which enables you to deploy, manage and monitor IP address and name resolution infrastructures in your organization. IPAM automatically discovers DHCP servers and DNS servers on your network and enables you to manage them from a central interface. Since it supports the DHCP server management, hence you can manage and track your dynamic and static IPv4 and IPv6 address space centrally. Now without wasting time, let's start the installation and configuration of IP address management feature in Windows Server 2019. For this demo, we are using TSLAB created in VirtualBox. And for this demo, we have a total three virtual machines, two Windows Server 2019 VM and one Windows 7 client computer. This is the our member server with the host name ws2k19-sfv02. This is the our domain controller with the host name ws2k19-dc01. And on this server, already we have installed and configured DHCP server rule as well. So now let's move to our member server on which we are planning to install and configure IP address management feature. Now first, let's click on Manage, select Add Rules and Features, click on Next. Next again, our local server is already selected. You can verify that ws2k19 hyphen sfv02. Let's click on Next. Remember, IPAM is a feature, so we need to click on Next on this console and on Select Feature, we need to select IP Address Management Server. Let's select the checkbox. It is also going to include certain additional features that are required for IP address management server feature. Fine. Let's click on add features to add those features as well. Let's click on next and click on install to start the installation process. Okay, as you can see, IPAM has been installed successfully with all required features on our member server. Now let's click on close to close this console. So once you have installed IPAM feature on your server, the next step is to configure your IPAM server. To do that, on server manager console, on left hand side, you will find IPAM. So let's click on it. The IPAM configuration process is normally performed through a step by step process using the Windows Server 2019 server manager console. Under IPAM server task, we have to perform total six steps. And as you can see, already step one is performed. Under connect to your IPAM server, it is telling us that it is already connected to our local server, which is ws2k19-srv02.mylab.local and it is connected using the credential of our domain admin, which is mylab slash administrator. Now we need to go for the step number two in which we are going to provision the our IPAM server. And for that, we need to click on this step number two link. So let's click on it. It will start a new wizard. On before you begin screen, you can read brief overview information about IP address management feature and what it is going to do in your organization. Fine. I'm going to click on next button to continue. Here it is asking us that how you want to configure your database in which IPAM is going to store its information. For this demonstration, we are going to use Windows internal database options. But suppose if you have a Microsoft SQL server in your organization, that time you can select the second checkbox. For this demo, we are going with a Windows internal database. Let's click on next to continue. On the select provisioning method page, select the provision method for the managed servers. We can either select manual provisioning method or group policy based provisioning method, which is going to perform certain tasks automatically using group policy objects. For the testing purpose, we are going to select group policy based provisioning method as manual provisioning require the additional configuration. And suppose if you are selecting group policy based provisioning method, that time you also have to specify GPU name prefix. For this demo, here I am giving a GPU name prefix mylab underscore IPAM. Once you select provisioning method, you need to click on next button. Okay, this is the summary which we have selected. Now here you can see this three GPU is going to create in our group policy management console. mylab underscore IPAM underscore DHCP for DHCP server. MyLab underscore IPAM underscore DNS for DNS servers 
and mylab underscore ipam underscore dc underscore nps for domain controllers and network policy servers. Fine. I'm going to click on apply button. Wait for the process to complete. Okay, then as you can see, we are receiving message with green checkbox provisioning completed successfully. Let me click on close button to close this console. So our step two has been uh, successfully completed and here you can see the message is there completed on Saturday, September 21st, 2019. Now let's move to step number three in which we are going to configure server discovery. In short, we are going to select our domains. For that, we need to click on this step number three link. Now, first of all, we need to click on this button because under select forest, if you try to click on this drop down menu, you are not able to see anything yet. So first we need to get a forest. Let's click on it. Okay, it is telling us that a background task has been started to fetch the trusted forest. Uh, please close the configuration server discovery dialog box and launch it again after the task finish execution. So let's click on OK button. Click on OK to close this console as well. Now here you can see we are receiving message that the discover servers are based on 21st September 2019. Fine. Let's again click on step number three link. And this time you can see our mylab.local forest is displayed here. Now suppose if you have multiple domains in your forest, that time you can add those domains from this console. But as of now, we have a single domain and mylab.local is our root domain and that is listed. To add this domain, we need to click on this add button. Fine. Now here it is telling us that select the server role to discover for mylab.local domain. We want to discover domain controller, DHCP server and a DNS server. Fine. Let's click on OK to complete server discovery. Let's click on OK button. And that's it. Now here you can see domain selected N1 and that is our mylab.local domain. Our step number four is to start server discovery. Let's click on it. It is not going to start any wizard, but here you can see there are one or more IPAM tasks running in the task scheduler. Please wait for their completion. After that, IPAM will discover all DNS servers, DSAP servers and domain controllers from your mylab.local domain. After a few minutes, the yellow bar will indicate that the discovery is completed and there will be a timestamp as well. After the discovery process, the next step is to add servers that you want to manage. For this, we need to click on this link, select or add servers to manage and verify IPAM access. Let's click on it. Notice that IPAM access status is blocked and that you can verify here. Okay, so this indicates that IPAM server has not yet been granted permission to manage the domain servers via group policy. To fix this, we need to run one Windows PowerShell CM delete. To do that, we need to right click on start button and let's open a Windows PowerShell admin. At Windows PowerShell, we need to run CM delete invoke hyphen IPAM GPO provisioning hyphen domain, which is mylab.local in our case hyphen gpo prefix name which is mylab underscore ipam in our case which we have specified earlier hyphen ipam server fqdn which is ws2k19 hyphen sav02 dot mylab dot local hyphen delegated gpo user which is administrator at mylab dot local fine we need to press enter key it is going to ask for the confirmation press y to continue as you can see, the message is there. It is creating uh, GPUs and also it is importing to our group policy management console. Press Y to continue again. Y to continue again. Again, press Y to continue. Fine. The execution of a Windows PowerShell has been completed successfully. Now I'm going to minimize this uh, Windows PowerShell and uh, select our server, which is the WS2K19 hyphen DC01. Because we have only one domain controller with a DNS server role for this demo, which is WS2K19 hyphen DC01. Let's right click here and go for the edit server. Here, I'm going to select DSCP server as well, because we also want to monitor and manage DSCP server role as well. Under manageability status, I'm going to select managed. Fine. Click on OK. 
and after changing its manageability status to manage here we can see we are receiving one red warning it is telling us that unblock ipam access that means our ipam server is not able to access the information or we can say inventory data from our domain controller you need to update the group policy on your domain controller or on all your servers after that your ipam server will have a access to get information from that server so let's move to our domain controller first of all i'm going to close the server manager console let's open command prompt let's run command gp update slash force to update the group policy okay group policy has been successfully updated let me close the command prompt and i'm going to show you one more thing let's open group policy management console on group policy management console here you can see we have total three new gpos mylab underscore ipam underscore dc nps dhcp and dns and those gpos are linked at our domain level but if you click on any of that gpu which we have created using that of windows powershell seem delete important thing is under security filtering here you can see this gpu is only up applying on our domain controller ws2k19 hyphen dc01 let me click on delegation as well here you can see one group is there ipam ug if you open active directory users and computer snap in and if you see the membership of the security group our ipam server is already member of the security group so indirectly our ipam server has a permission to edit settings delete and modify security as well let's open active directory users and computer snap in as well let's click on users container and here we need to find ipam ug security group let's open it let's click on members and here you can see our ipam server which is ws2k19 hyphen sv02 is member of the security group and this security group is also member of dscp administrator and dns admin as well as event log readers that means this group has a permission to manage our dscp server and a dns server as well as it can read our event logs fine let's close everything and let's go back to our member server let's right click here and select refresh server access status okay still you can see ipam access status is blocked let me again edit a server settings let's change it to unmanage click on okay click on yes let's again change it to manageability status to manage let's click on okay fine let's uh, right click here and select refresh server access status okay still you can see app access status is a block uh, it will take some times after that you, you will have an app access on your domain controller if you don't want to wait that time uh, you can manually update the group policy on your domain controller again and then restart your dc but uh, which is not recommended at all so you have to wait for a few minutes and after that you will have app access on your dc and on dns servers Okay, let's again go back to our domain controller and let's again manually update the group policy. Let's run command gp update slash force to update the policy manually. Okay, policy has been updated successfully. Let's again go back to our member server. Let's uh, right click on our ws2k19 hyphen dc01 server and select refresh server access status. So, according to Microsoft documentation on DACnet. it may take up to 10 minutes for the status to change from block to unblock and now you can see our ipam access status is unblock and here we have a green check box means everything is working perfectly fine so that's it we have successfully completed the steps to install and configure ip address management feature on windows server 2019 The next step is to verify our IPAM configuration. First of all, I'm going to click on uh, IP address blocks. Here you can see it is totally empty. Let's click on IP address inventory. Here IP address range groups. Here you can see we don't have any data on it. So let's again go back on a server inventory. Select our domain controller. Let's right click here 
and select retrieve all server data it will take a few minutes to complete and after that you will have all the data about your dns dhcp and domain controllers fine let's again move to ip address blocks and you can see it is still empty so we need to do one thing let's uh, refresh the console and after that you can see our dhcp scope will be available you can see managed by service ms dhcp our server name is ws2k19 hyphen dc01 we have a one dhcp scope on our dhcp server uh, which is starting from 172.18.72.25 which is end on 172.18.72.254 Fine. Here you can see total uh, a percentage utilized is 0.43. Assigned address is total 230, and currently one address is in use. Fine. Let's click on IP address inventory. Let's again refresh it. Here we don't have any data. Let's click on IP address range group. Here you can see that information about our IP address range means our DHCP scope is available here. If you click on DNS and DHCP servers. under monitor and manage here we can verify we have a one dns server rule instance which is running on our domain controller and same for a dhcp let's click on dhcp scopes uh, you can get the list of all your dhcp scope on uh, this console suppose if you want to create any additional dhcp scope from ipam management console you can let me show you that uh, let's uh, right click on our dhcp server and here we have uh, options to create new dhcp scope You just need to fill all the required information, and then after you need to click on Apply OK button. You will have your new DHCP scope on your DHCP server using IPAM management. Let's close it. For this demonstration, I'm going to add one DNS resource record. Here we have our both DNS zones: mylabdot local and underscore msdcs dot mylabdot local. But here you can see under zone status. Uh, uh it is telling us that currently it doesn't have any data so let's click on dns and dhcp servers let's uh, right click on dns and select retrieve server data okay fine let's again click on dns zones and uh let's click on refresh and here you can see now it is telling us that zone status is okay Okay, for this demonstration, we are going to create one resource record under our mylab dot local DNS zone. To do that, we need to select our zone name, right click on it, and select Add DNS Resource Record. Let's maximize the console. Here we are going to add a resource record under DNS zone name mylab dot local, and under DNS server ws two k nineteen hyphen dc zero one dot mylab dot local. Let's click on New. Here you need to select. the resource record types so for this demonstration i'm going to create a alias record which will be a www.mylab.local and fqdn for target host is ws2k19 have an dc01.mylab.local fine let's click on okay button to add this resource record to our dns server fine let's move to our dns server to verify the same thing Let's open DNS Management Console. Okay, let's expand for lookup zones. Click on mylab dot local, and here you can see we have a one resource record www, and it is a alias record pointing to ws two k nineteen hyphen dc zero one dot mylab dot local. So that confirms that we can manage our DNS and DHCP servers using IPAM Management Console. That's conclude the video demonstration on how to install and configure IP address management feature on Windows Server 2019. Thank you all for watching this video.